Hello, Mr. Barton here. And in this video, I'm gonna to seek to answer the question, what are the benefits of students writing diagnostic questions? But before we start, it's story time. So, once upon a time, well, uh, two years ago, in fact, I was teaching my year 11 class, and they were an absolutely delightful class. They were a top set, um, but for numerous reasons that I won't go into on this video, um, they were really, really struggling when I picked them up in year 11. So for a lot of topics, I was needing to start right back at the beginning and try and build up their confidence and so on. However, there was one girl in that class, and she won't mind me uh, naming her here, she was called Josie, and she was by far one of the most able students I'd ever taught in my life. And she was delightful as well. She wasn't cocky, wasn't arrogant, would help out all the other kids and so on. Uh, she, she was the kind of child where whenever I was going through a worked example on the board, I'd have one eye on the board and I'd have one eye on Josie just so she could give me a reassuring nod on the rare occasions I'd actually got something right. She was like my built-in checking mechanism. So I was always constantly challenged to, to push Josie because I didn't want to get in bored. But she'd finish the work before everyone else. And as I say, she wouldn't moan or anything like that. But I really wanted to keep her stimulated. So at the start of the year, um, I'll be honest, I, I would just give her the textbook and say just crack on with the next topics. But I didn't want to do that because it meant that she wasn't feeling part of the lesson. Um, and then what I tried to do was provide a topic specific extension work, but flipping out, that was taking me forever. And she was just nailing, like whizzing through it all anyway. So in the end, I thought, well, wait a minute, let's, let's do something different. So say for example, um, I was teaching a lesson on, well, let's, let's take one that I'm going to actually show you, uh, upper and lower bounds, a classic GCSE topic. So I'd start the lesson by asking a diagnostic question on upper lower bounds, and I'm going to do a video in this series about when to ask questions and how to deal with students' responses and all that. But I'd, I'd ask this at the start of the lesson on upper, low, upper and lower bounds. And the kids had voted with the fingers A, B, C, D, and it became <laughs> very obvious very quickly that the kids didn't have a flipping clue about upper and lower bounds. Apart from, of course, Josie, who'd absolutely nailed it. So I said to Josie, whilst I'm dealing with the rest of the kids, what I want you to do, Josie, is I want you to write down what mistakes you think the rest of the class are making based on their answers. So I think like C was the correct answer. So what mistake does A reveal? What mistake does B reveal? And what mistake does D reveal? So she's like, all right, fine, fine. And then I said, then I want you to write your own diagnostic question. And you've got to do, now the kids were familiar with this stage with diagnostic questions, so they knew the golden rules. So I said, you've got to make sure there's a right answer. There's three wrong answers. You've got to make sure that each of those wrong answers reveals a specific misconception and nobody can get it right while still having a misconception. And I want you to justify all your answers. And she went at it and she found it flipping hard. But it was perfect. It was an ideal way to challenge Josie because... That's the first major benefit of students writing questions. They're challenging. Think of the skills involved to write one, and you'll know this if you try to write one yourself. You've got to know your topic. You've got to understand not just how to get the right answer, but where the wrong answers come from. You need a bit of creativity. You've got to be able to communicate why you've chosen each of the wrong answers. It's testing everything. It, Josie found it really hard, but really, really beneficial. It's an ideal activity to use for a homework or assessment. And it doesn't just have to be for your highest achieving students, by any means. If you finish the unit on perimeter or whatever it is, and you're looking for a homework or an assessment, just say to kids, I want you to write me one question on whatever topic we've just done, perimeter, perimeter of a rectangle or whatever. And I want you to justify why you've chosen each of your wrong answers. And I want you to hand it in. It's a brilliant way to assess how much students have, have understood. And it's a rich, more interesting homework. And it's a bit flipping quicker to mark than setting them 20 questions as well. It's also a brilliantly useful resource. Once you get these questions in, you can use them next lesson or set as a homework. Josie became one of my main suppliers of my starter materials because I just take her diagnostic questions, flash them up on the visualizer or take a picture of them and project them up on the board. And there's me starter for my next lesson. Ideal. And finally, if you choose to put your students' questions on the website, then it's rewarding as well because students can track their usage. They can see how many kids all around the world are using their questions. They can see how many times kids are getting them right, how many times they're getting them wrong, what wrong answers they're going for. They can get obsessed like I do with all the data. Are girls getting them right more than boys? It's a really rewarding thing for kids to do to have their questions on the site and being used. So that's why I think it's a brilliant thing to get kids writing these questions. I just thought I'd show you some questions now. 
So there's there's Josie's question that she wrote on Bounds that I was telling you about. One of the, um, one of the first times I ever got her to do this. And it was a love, just again, a really challenging experience for her that she really got a lot out of. But since then, we've had loads. These are examples that kids have, uh, sorry, teachers have sent in from kids in their lesson. So one on kind of expected frequency there. Uh, one that a teacher was uh, teaching on standard form. Beautiful questions. So get kids, just write them down in the books, justify their reasons if you want to, and you've got a really rich um, activity. So there's why I think there's massive benefits to students writing these questions together. Hope that was useful.